Hey, Coach Jan here, and we are going to do some Shaolin training, emphasizing the back and the legs. So it's going to be great. And today we're going to do uh, a bit slower, so emphasizing the Tai Chi approach of slowing yourself down to speed up your perception. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, it should uh, give... I want to sweat, so I, I, I need to sweat a bit. But I don't want to move too fast. I'm still in the process of recovering uh, from a car accident, from two of them, actually. So I'm still in that process, and I really want to take some time to strengthen areas, look at it as an opportunity, and strengthen some areas that I may not have uh, given as much attention to in my previous, um, you know, comfort zone training, uh, which is, you know, some, some vigorous stuff. So it's happening right now, and uh, feel free to ask questions as usual, or if you're watching this on YouTube after the live stream on TikTok, uh, feel free to write questions in the the uh, comments and I will of course address them and I'm always happy to make a video for you addressing any particular techniques as well. So we're going to go for it right now and right. we're always going to start out with uplifting heaven, exhale washing the hands down, inhaling up, draw the hands up. Stretch up, exhaling down. Inhaling up from the south side. Stretch out the hips. Exhaling down. And I'm gonna move this camera over here because we're gonna go for more stuff over here. There we go. Better lighting too. All right. All right. Check the best lighting over here. Oh yeah, I know what to do. Way less soothing for me, but it's gonna be great. Okay, just put it back here. There we go. Okay. So, first move, feet shoulder width apart parallel. Oh. This is Dragon Whips' his tail. Notice that I'm turning my hand, spinning my finger, spinning my shoulder. I'm gonna spin, turn my hips, and come down. Spin, turn my hands, and two hands pull. Warming up, exhaling down, and across. Inhale up, exhale down, exhale even deeper. You can also give one breath to each side. So exhaling, exhaling, and then exhale, stage two. Inhale. Inhale, stage two. Notice that my feet are pivoting, meaning that I go one, one, one. So, feet parallel, pivot one, then I pivot that one again to open it, then I pivot the other. So, super important to know. Hollow fist, exhale, inhale up, exhale down. And reverse it, breath pulls you up, inhaling, exhale, breath drops you down. side, inhale, open the leg, exhale, drop it down, inhale, open the leg, exhale, drop it down, inhale, up, exhale, down. Notice that I don't drop my weight on the foot, I let the foot touch the ground first and then I shift the weight. You always want to be able to test the ground before you shift the weight. It's called walking like a tiger. 
testing the ground for quicksand, etc. Testing the ground to make sure it's solid. Putting up, test the ground, shift the weight. My only my heel touches as well. Test the ground, shift the weight. Lift up, exhale, test the ground, shift the weight. And you still have to check. So I have my check here and then test down. Check, test down. Also, another note, notice my hip and look at the angle. The angle shooting down into the inside of the leg with the muscle wrapping around the thigh downward. So I cascade the weight, softening the groin, cascade the weight down, soften the groin. So collapse the groin as you drop the hip. And that'll help you root into the leg, be more solid into your root and lift up, inhaling up, out, exhale. My hips are open. I'm going to collapse this groin and drop this hip. Inhaling up, collapse the groin. And that's part of rooting. Rooting in Tai Chi, really, really, really helpful for grappling, for wrestling, for punching solid, etc. Notice that I'm opening the hip, boom, collapse in the groin, throwing a really solid cross. So same concept, whether you're grappling or striking. Now we're gonna go opposite, out, in, out, in. So first we're just gonna warm up the leg. So we're reversing the angle before we were going like this from inside to out, out from outside to in. You may see pe people do this faster, super fast. Right now we want to be really conscious of the weight distribution. And now we're going to start to add the opposite fingers. These fingers are going to point the opposite way here, and then the hands come to center. Fingers point the opposite direction. Everything comes to center. So now we're doing a bit more of a Muay Thai concept here. The one, two, the side knee, hitting with the inside of the knee to the kidneys or spleen or floating rib or liver and boom, you take the head, you pull the opponent's head and the body toward the strike. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, create the shape, the structure. Exhale. Inhale deep, exhale. Obviously we're opening our hips by doing this technique, which is why we started with the sensation of opening the hips first. So we want to make sure that we don't get too wrapped up into the martial application of anything. You always want to be able to connect to that martial application, but you don't want to be obsessed with it. You don't want to be obsessed with it because we're, right now we're doing this for healing and health and circulation, the movement of the energy. When I say the movement of the energy, what I mean is that by allowing yourself to visualize where the strike is going, where it's supposed to be hitting on an opponent, you can then remove the fight, remove the fight from the technique and focus on the breathwork and visualization that helps to emphasize that impact or that power in a particular direction. So one of the most important concepts in martial arts I've ever come across is let go of the fight, focus on where you're projecting the energy, and that's going to help you align the body, help you focus the mind, and give you really the benefits of this training which are far greater than simply being able to, to fight and or uh, defend yourself and protect others. That's all also and super important, but you also want to just feel healthy, feel great. So let's go back down to what we started again, another round of Dragon Whips its tail, shoulder. So this is for someone, this is an example of getting out of an arm lock. I've gotten out of several arm locks like this where you turn your arm, rotate your arm and shoulder, and then bring the arm back across. You can bring it back as a back fist or bring it back as a, uh, back fist is, you know, sometimes that works, but really just the concept of being able to get someone's grip off of you and roll the pressure back onto them to move them or push them. Obviously I do push hands, so here. 
rotate here. Inhale. Look at my thumb on the outside, the outside arm, the one that's not doing the dragging with its tail. Notice that the thumb is spinning out with the hips. And then I bring the hands over as if I'm grasping someone's arm and I'm pulling it down. I'm pulling down into a snake stance. And I'm not going too deep either. If you can go deep, that's great. I'm not going too deep. Nail up. Inhale. Exhale. From the side. 45 degrees. Angle. Turn, 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 turn. Pull. Switch the angle again. Turn, turn. And again, breath work and visualization. As you inhale, draw color in through the spinning fingers. The breath, visualize it as a color going into your belly, more specifically your lower dantian. Inhale, draw it up, exhale. Inhale deep, exhale. So I make sure you guys can hear me. Your headphones. Bend, boom, throw down. And this is really, really great, again, from a grappling standpoint, being able to, to snatch an arm, snatch an arm, get the pull, oftentimes set up a little pull, knowing that the opponent's gonna pull back. So you pull, the opponent pulls back, you ride that pull back, and you can push their limb into their own body, uh, help to disrupt their weight if you need to move them, and do a bunch of other cool, fun stuff. So, 10 more. Really great for the waist, the spine, and coming over. Inhale deep, exhale now. Do six of these. This is called Jade Rabbit Watches the Moon. Keep your tongue on the ceiling of your mouth, slight tension in your anus. Notice that we're not going down to a full horse stance, we're going to keep it half horse stance. You're gonna stand up, exhale halfway, weight stays on your heels. Left hand over right, right hand over left, left comes over right, exhale, push down. Two stage inhalation, inhale one, inhale two, exhale one, exhale two. Every stage of breath has an intention, has breath work and visualization associated with it. If you don't do the breath work and the visualization with your exercises, you're missing the majority of the benefits of these exercises. So it's super important to be able to train your mind using breath work and visualization. It doesn't matter what exercises you're doing from any particular training modality, but be able to know how the power of breath work and visualization. As a matter of fact, I highly recommend this. This book is super amazing. It's a manual for self-healing, but it's, it's many, many years old. My mother is like my mom's book. I just started reading this recently, but it has a lot of the same concepts of breath work and visualization, utilizing it as a means to control the mind and to have access to the subconscious functions in the body. Really, really important stuff. Highly recommend you check this out um, <clears throat> because at the end of the day, any physical activity at all. If you want to enhance your experience and enhance your strength, breath work and visualization are what's required for you to go deeper and deeper and deeper into it, to have more insight and get more data on all the movements, on how those movements impact your surroundings, etc. So very, very important stuff. So we're working on the same concept here. Inhale, draw the breath as a color to the belly. Inhale even deeper. Exhale, push that color down. Exhale, even deeper, flatten it. Why are you doing that? Inhale into the belly, see the breath as a color. Imagine it getting brighter and brighter. Exhale, you're condensing it. Exhale, even deeper, you're storing it away. This is an energy storage exercise. It's 
meant to make you feel like you're charging your battery. The whole concept here is that the more you visualize yourself storing in energy, the more full of energy you're going to feel. So what is energy? Well, some people might call it chi. That's not something that I utilize, a term I utilize very much. Because in the Western world, it has many different connotations. And what we're really talking about here is using your mind, self-generating experiences. Self-generate the experience of storing energy and you're going to have feel like you have more energy. The same concept of saying that, hey, I wanna feel positive or negative about a particular situation. You control how you feel about a particular situation. So here we're controlling or learning how to control our sense of energy regulation, of how strongly we feel in a given moment. It doesn't matter how we feel, that we can feel strong in a moment, strongly about whatever you'd like to feel strongly about. So you're gonna gather the breath, see it as a color, and visualize yourself storing that color away. Whatever color intuitively comes to you, now stay seated, six more, inhale deep, and exhale. You want to store energy. You want to feel great. You can give yourself a little smile, an inward smile, just for you. The concept here is that it's all these physiological effects that happen when we smile. So keep that smile going inward for yourself. My teacher used to say eventually you want all the organs to smile. So that's pretty cool. It's a lofty goal. Inhale deep. Two more. Exhale, store the color away. One more. So now we're going to use, we're going to offer with one hand and we're going to remove. Inhale deep. I'm inhaling, I'm turning one arm, I'm blocking using this elbow to, to actually move an object or pressure past me. And I'm going to exhale, serve it with one hand and remove or clear the path for it with the other. Inhale deep. This is very similar to Wing Chun. Pretty much is Wing Chun. Inhale, draw the energy and the color in. Shoot it out through the palms and fingertips. About an inch or two beyond. So the arms, notice that I'm using my waist, my hips, and my arms. And notice that I'm not pushing it too much. Keeping it gentle and light, but still some speed. Four more. Now we're going to start doing some back kicks. Start warming up the lower back, glutes, and you're going to lift your heel, point the heel to whatever your target is, wherever your target is. So point the heel, make sure you can make eye contact with your target, and you're going to simply lift and bring back. A few different schools of thought on this. Some coaches, trainers, teachers recommend keeping your spine completely straight and flexing the glutes to throw the back kick. Other ones will have you lean forward, drop the weight completely, make your chest parallel to the ground, and then bring your body back up. It's really best, what's best for you. That's what I like to say. You have to find what feels good for you to be able to throw these techniques. Well, so depending on how I feel, depending on my opponent, I'm going to throw the technique at what feels right for that moment. So keep an eye line. Eye line on your target, boom, and bring it down. So my eye line's here, back and down. I inhale up, I exhale as I go down. That's just part of the breath work I like to visualize. Exhale, pushing the collar out, inhale, bringing it up. Breath breaks my posture. 
back to aligned. We're going to go for 10. Notice that I'm using my arms to counterbalance. So whatever leg's going out, that's the arm that's going up. And notice that this is guard. So I have one arm up to guard at all times, at least. With the guard, I'm doing my best to feel the circulation through my fingertips. Obviously, the emphasis is on the kicking leg, but I still want to feel relaxed and the circulation moving through the other hands, through the other limbs. So, switching sides. Ten. Turn around. That was 11. Okay, and now let's open up the legs again. This time, slowly bringing the knee across to the shoulder. Obviously, this is not super fast, so we're just going to gently raise the knee up to the opposite shoulder. Very gentle. Do your best to touch your chest, but if you can't, that's totally fine. Especially if you're warming up, don't push it too hard. I recommend exhaling when lifting the knee and agreeing with the compression of the body, the contraction. So as the breath pushes out, agree with it. Ten each side. Less than keeping my 11s up, my guard up. Even when it's a little wider, still keeping it up. Now we're going to go to the same side. One. Ten each side. I'm on six. So now we're going to give ourselves a little bit of a jumping tap. You can kick the heels to the, to the butt if you'd like, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to slap my feet and we're going to just jump. Slap it the back foot. Go for a hundred. It's twenty for me. Fifty. Sixty. Seventy. And uplifting head right away. Exhale now a little more. Exhale, wash down the leg. Inhale up. Other side. Inhale up. Other side. Catch the breath and wash the breath down. Inhale up. Exhale on one leg, like this. Capture the other leg. Inhale up. Exhale, drop the knee, open the hip. Pull the foot back. Try to keep the hips and the shoulders square to in front of you to a point that you're focused on with your eye 
Exhale, swish. Inhale, exhale down. Inhale up. Get your posture. Exhale, drop the knee. From the hip, pull back. Going to start to work on elbows. Cutting back and cutting back. Actually, before we do that, we're going to work on warming up the shoulders. One hand on one shoulder. You can touch or you can keep uh, an Omi Tovo, which means Buddha bless you, kind of a prayer hand on the shoulder. Remember, Shaolin Kung Fu is Chan Buddhism. Chan Buddhism and Shaolin Kung Fu are the same thing. Movement as mantra. If you're aware of mantra, concept of the repetition of a divine name, etc., particular saying here in Shaolin Kung Fu, all movement, and the reason you're saying Om Tovo Buddha bless you and opening the chest, you're opening your heart conceptually to higher power, to Buddha, etc. Remember, Buddha is essentially the uh, highest version of self. So, here, when you do this, still similar concepts that bring you back to that, con that idea of internal cultivation. So, every little detail is connected to that cultivation. Even here, the fingers, the hands, they're not flexed and hard. They're soft, but the shape is clarified. The eyes on the middle finger of each hand, whatever the active hand is, you're going to continuously be switching the eye two middle fingers and focusing on the breath work, drawing color in and pushing color out. Inhale in, exhale, wash out color through the limbs, through the arms, with the eyes focused on each middle finger, whichever one you're activating. Inhaling, eye on middle finger, going up, exhaling, down. We're gonna do 10. Three. Four. I inhale up the front and I pass my hip. When I go over the top of my head, I start exhaling. Notice that the arm is as if you're in a corridor, a very tight one. So it does not move outward like this. It moves over, behind, under, and up. Switch, inhale up, exhale. Oh. Notice that my feet are shoulder width apart and parallel. Eye in the middle fingers, I inhale up, exhale, wash it out. Inhaling up, exhaling, chopping down. Inhale up the back, this comes over the head, exhale, chop down. Notice that the chopping down is very soft. So I'm actually not pressing or pulling my arm down at all. I am allowing gravity to pull my elbow. More specifically, allowing my elbow to relax as if there's a weight on it, and I drop down. Inhale up. Exhale up that gravity. Pull my elbow. Notice that I'm attempting to allow my head to be lifted by an imaginary string the entire time, so I'm not doing my best not to swivel my head much. switch side and feel the work the work being done in the waist and the hips and the back inhale up exhale down
So remember, every time we do this kind of stuff, you're giving yourself wonderful extension, a stretch, breath work, and targeting practice. This is target practice. You're pushing the target, the breath work and visualization through the fingertips is helping you aim your intention, your energy, wherever you're in a punch, wherever you're going to drop weight, etc. All this is happening right now. So you're giving yourself a, a soft place to experiment with the technique because when you grapple, when you box, when you do any type of, of power movement, you're going to call upon this technique rapid fire under pressure. So it's very important to have the ability, a place for you to train the subtle mechanics that are always happening when you perform at a higher level to be able to distill those mechanics and train those mechanics that most people forget or are not aware are actually happening in their body mechanic, in their movement throughout the day. So you really want to take this opportunity. Softening the elbow softens the shoulder. Minimizing the tension allows you to have more circulation, better circulation and more energy reserves to call upon, which means that you're expending less energy to hold a posture. It's a whole concept, a major concept in Tai Chi. It's minimize tension to allow yourself to have more energy which to utilize for whatever you need to do. So we're inhaling up, eye of the middle finger, exhaling. We're going to do three more. And now we're going to windmill. One. So oftentimes I'll give a breath to one side. Inhale up. Exhale over. Inhaling up. Exhaling over. And notice that my head alignment is a little bit out of whack. So I have to make some adjustments for myself. And the breath work I just articulated, now I'm going to switch it. So I was exit. Inhaling up, exhaling down here. I'm going to keep that exhalation just because I want to balance out my breath work. I'm going to keep exhaling here. I'm going to exhale on this one and inhale up on the one that I was exhaling on. So I've just reversed the breathing for myself. And of course, when I do that, notice that my body's out of whack, meaning the alignment's out of whack. So I have to readjust myself again just to check in, just to make sure I have the best posture. And now, switching directions. The hands are at opposite sides at all times. Keep switching your eyes. I'm following the hand that's going up behind me. But you can also follow the hand that's coming over head. And again, all of these variations you want to experience for yourself. How do you react with slight variation? Huge, huge, huge concept to bring into anything that you do. Ask yourself, how do you react with a slight variation? And measure the difference yourself. You will have absolute progress by doing that in anything. You will be able to measure your own progress. Very important. Rather than to having people tell you how you're doing, you can tell yourself. Very, very important. And it's happening right now. So we're just switching directions and saying, okay, 
I'm going to look at the hand coming up behind me and switch and look at the other hand coming up behind me. I'm not really looking at the hand going down in front of me. But I do that only for a set number. Maybe I'll do it for five on each side. And I'm also aware of the breath work and visualization that I'm doing here. I'm inhaling up on the back one. On one of them, exhaling on the other one. So I'm alternating my breath. But now I'm going to look at the one coming overhead and down. And I'm extending all the way through, so it's not just the shoulder, the shoulder blade, the scapula protracting into the back, disappearing. And let's reverse it one more time to see the difference here. Let's look at the one that's going up, five and five. Now let's look at the one that's going down. Inhale, uplift, uplifting heaven. Just feel how open the body feels after that. Just experience that for a moment. Let's check the time, 10 o'clock. Okay, we're gonna go for about another 25 minutes. And we're going to do a lot of stretching, so that means that we're going to soon bridge into stretching. But I want to get a few more kicks in. And let's get some kicks in here with just opening up the hip and shooting it. Let's, let's shoot a... <clears throat> Actually, we're going to do the front snap kick. Oftentimes, the front snap kick in Shaolin Kung Fu, the drill looks like this. One, two... Notice how low the leg is. It's not a high kick at all. It's a front heel kick. It's not even a push kick, meaning that it's not a teep. You're not pushing with the ball or your foot. You're extending the heel and the knuckle. These two knuckles pushing the breath through index and middle finger knuckle about an inch or two beyond. You're kicking the color. Think of the color. You're pushing color out your heel and through your knuckle at the same time. So anytime you do this, anytime you have a limb and a leg and an arm moving in the same direction in Shaolin Kung Fu. The concept is that you're pushing the breath work and visualization from the belly through the limbs as if, imagine this is a leg and this is an arm. And if they touch or if they're going to the same target area, the concept is you're pushing your awareness into the target area and then when you draw the limbs back, you're drawing your awareness back with new data. The concept is almost like you're fishing. You're pushing the breath and visualization to target point. From target point, you're gathering data and you pull it back into you when you inhale. So from here, inhale, draw the breath work in. It takes time to develop the mind, to develop this by repetition, this practice, so that when you touch somebody or something, you gather sense, you feel, what's happening inside their body. Maybe what's happening for you in that situation might be simply be where the weight is, where the tension is. If you know tension is on one side of the body, you can probably push on another side of the body and roll that tension over that person's soft part. So there's a tense, tense part and a soft part. You push on the soft part, it melts away, the tense part falls over, you cause them to break their posture, that gives you ideally an advantage. These are concepts that we utilize in Tai Chi push hands a lot that are very applicable to grappling and sparring in general. Um, the concept in Kempo of canceling height, meaning that someone's tall, do something that brings their head down. And uh, you know, there are many different other concepts like that where this awareness, knowing where to hit, where to push, to get the reaction that you want. You can train core. You can train core mechanics of it and what we're doing right now. So let's go for it. So push, inhale. Actually, I'm gonna plug this in because I think I'm running out of battery. Give me 
me a second. And I'll probably have to switch over here. Better light though, so that's good. All right, here we go, I got a plug. Now we have some new location. All right, so here we are. We're going to just do this basic challenge drill, punch and kick at the same time. Inhale, pull both limbs back. So we're going to go 10 each side. Previously we did the shoulder opening. The reason we were doing the shoulder opening was to warm up the back and the spine and the shoulders to do a backward strike with an elbow. Feet shoulder width apart and parallel. Exhale. Then instead I'm going to cross my center line from behind. From behind, back, center line, chop across, and up. Keep the hands up like your 11s as if you're protecting your temples. Cut across and back. Notice that I'm arc, arcing over and back. Over and back. Over and back. Down each side. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Notice that I'm doing a two-stage inhalation here as well. Inhale, exhale, inhale, inhale even deeper, exhale, inhale. The exhalation is more of an explosive exhalation. So I'm pushing out more breath. Notice that I'm coordinating the hips and dropping the hips and turning the waist. So there's a marriage of gravity here. Slow it down. Really feel the extension, especially if this is something that you're not used to doing. Beautiful. Now, we're going to go into a classic Shaolin Tai Chi hybrid exercise. We're going to be in our horse stance. You can allow your horse stance to get lower and lower and lower as you do this, as you warm up. If you can already drop into a low horse stance, that's awesome, but you don't need to do that right here. As a matter of fact, doing it high is also incredibly valuable. Being able to have these mechanics in the small circular form rather than the big circular form will allow you to bring them into the, your daily um, operations more readily. In other words, the smaller the circle, the greater the centrifugal force, the uh, more dynamic your movement can be in terms of the subtle power. So up here is totally fine, and if you can go lower, that's great too. Here, we're, we're going to start off. Reaching one hand out, the other hand's open to chamber. Inhale deep, gather. Notice that I'm inhaling and drawing the breath in through my fingertips, spiraling my hands because I'm actually using this to roll. Look how one hand rolls the other hand down. I'm deflecting pressure. I'm moving pressure down and throwing it out. Inhaling, I'm moving the pressure down and not only is the awareness of my fingertips, it's actually going to my forearm. So I'm rolling it down, I'm using the forearm, I'm sticking, it's a Tai Chi concept. 
I'm riding pressure, the opponent's pressure, and redirecting it gently to the other side of my body. I roll the opponent down, I ride their pressure to the other side of my body, and then I take that pressure through my shoulder and whip it out the other shoulder. Through the fingers, the knuckles, index and middle finger knuckles, exhaling, pushing the color and visualization, and enter to beyond. Inhale deep, exhale. All that's happening here. And instead of getting lower, because I want to give myself a nice stretch, and notice that I'm not doing this. I'm not switching my feet, doing the double pivot. The double pivot does work sometimes for certain techniques. That's not, this is not one of them that I recommend doing. I recommend having full footing on one, full root on one leg and pivoting the other leg to have stability and power. Use the ground here, use the power to run forward here, to blast forward here, and then inhale, Notice that I'm already, as I'm ro rotating here, already opening this back leg. So I'm already rooting here. I'm strong. If something happens, I can move. I can move with a stable base. Otherwise, no, no base is stable. And then I connect into the other stable base. And I transfer the weight. Now I've already transferred the weight. Boom. Out. Stable base helps me put more power forward. Inhale, Dave. So there's a one, two switching, one, two. So we're gonna go for 50 of these, 25 each side. You ready, let's go. Inhale, draw the color in, exhale. Out. Exhale down, inhaling up, exhale down. Let's hold a plank for a moment. Let's check the time. Hold in the plank. We're going to go for a minute here. Do your best to keep your eyes slightly above your finger line. Bring the body up. Help lifting heaven. Bow 
bounce, gentle bounce, like very, very gentle to stretch the chest and the shoulders. Bounce, bounce, very gentle. Pull across, gentle, soften the shoulder. Exhale, shoulder blade forward, switch. One arm behind the elbow line, gently pull across, soften this shoulder. Push the shoulder blade, this one forward. Gentle. And release one more time inside. One more time. We're going to go down again. This time we're going to do 10 leg raises. We're going to work the glutes lifting up back here. We're going to do 10 lifting up. And when we do that lift, again, we're going to keep the eyes locked to help the structure. There again, shoulders, switch, 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 this time inhale up, exhale down, inhale up, exhale to the left leg, inhale up, exhale to the right leg, inhale up and behind, exhale reaching down. stretch. We'll do one more set. This time we're going to hold for 30 seconds and then we're going to do the 10 lifts. So we're combining it. And we're going to do five each side. So we're doing half and half. Half of what we did with the first one, half of what we did the second round. Let's go for it. 30 seconds. side. Inhaling up. Down the right side. Inhaling up overhead. Down. Inhale up. Down. We're going to finish up with a few a few uh, exercises and stretches. Take this light off. Going over here to the, to the floor. are flat, extended as far as I can on either side. I'm going to bring one leg up and I'm going to touch over behind me. Inhale up. We're going to do 10 on each side, touching the toe behind me, over. Do your best to keep the shoulders down. You're going to use the, the hips and the waist.
Beautiful. Relax. Sit back. Got the hands down. Stretch. We're gonna get a nice back kick going here on the ground, kicking up. We're gonna look at the target that we're kicking at, and we're gonna go for a 10 inch leg. Go for it. And switch. Wind the legs out and stretch. Come up, put one leg in front and touch the toes. And then Shift the weight forward. You can even keep your hands on your hips and feel the extension in the base leg. Keep the hips and shoulders square. And shift. Flip it forward. Suck in the belly button. Lift the collarbone. Exhaling down. Touch the toe. Feel deep. And then shift forward, hands on the hips. Suck in the belly button, lift up. Switch that stretch one more time. Hands down, leg out, and feel the same stretch. So leg is behind, extend, pull for 10 seconds. And switch, push it off, take the pressure off, bring the leg forward, and then lean forward, feel the extension. Switch, take the pressure off, bring the foot forward, and this time lift the back leg. Take the pressure off, switch, the leg forward, and lift the back leg. And now keep this leg here. Watch what I'm gonna do with my back leg. I bring it in and across, and I slide myself down, make that triangle smaller and smaller. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift inside. We're gonna work the inside of the thigh and lifting the leg. You can see it on the outside of your screen. So you're gonna go for 20, two, four, six, eight, nine, 11, 12, 26, 20, 
and switch sides. Taking it through. Flip the leg through and one, two, four, six, seven, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. I'm gonna drop down, check my sofa. Okay, we're over here. I'm gonna take my leg. I'm gonna slide it down so that the kneecap is supported. I'm gonna keep this leg bent, not touching the doing my best to not touch here. And I'm going to lift my hips off the ground. My head is going to, fingers touching my temple. And we're going to work the groin, lifting up and down. We're going to go for 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Same thing on the other side. Switch. And we go one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. From there, we're gonna go into a split, stretching the inside of the thigh, fold the arms and hang. Shift the weight to one leg, forehead to knee. To the other side, knee up deep. Exhale, forehead to knee. One more time each side. And switch. Coming down, take the arms out. We're gonna come down in this gentle push up, arching the back, looking up. Look to your left, emphasize the right hip falling down. Inhale deep, exhale, feeling it open. Switch sides, inhale, exhale, emphasize. Looking to the right, emphasizing the left hip, touching the ground, opening up. One more time. Right side. One more time. Left side. Inhale up. Exhale, dropping down. Push up. Come back down. And finally, we're going to finish up with abs and then the first yoga stretch. So. We're going to do two sets. Well, really, we're going to do uh, a group of four different exercises. So, do two sets of that four. We're going to do 20 each. The concept here, my feet are straight, my legs are straight. Ribs to hips, that's it. Fingers touching the temples, not holding the head, so you don't want to strain your neck. Fingers touching the temples, and the crunch. Rips the hips. Go one, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, sixteen, seventeen, eight, nine, twenty. That's it. Standard crunch. Twenty. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. Great. Ninety, ninety, like this. One, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten. Great. Legs up and tuck. Great. Inhale. Let's the fingers reach your heels. Fingers and heels reaching opposite direction. Feel the stretch. Exhaling down. And now one more set. Fingers on temples. Ribs to hips. That's it. Once you feel the contraction, you release. 20. That's it. Standard. That's it. 
That's it. That's straight up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Go with the fingers and the heels stretch. And you know what? Just for a good measure, we're going to activate the obliques. We're going to turn the, the legs. Hand on my... Actually, I'll show you the other way first. My knees are one way. My elbow, opposite elbows. My right elbow out. My knees both flay to the side, to the left. My left hand on my obliques. Rib to hip. That's it. Other hand on the temple. And once you feel the contraction, you release 20. And switch. And switch. One more time each side. Twenty. This is a bonus. Switch. Beautiful. And come up immediately. And we're going for uplifting heaven right away, of course. Uplifting heaven. Suck in the belly button. Feet under your sit bones. Sit bones is cut the hips in half. Right down the middle. Half is up each half. Should be the line where the pelvis meets the femur and you put your heels right under that line. That's your sit bones. Suck in the belly button. Lift the collarbone. As if a string is lifting each side of the collarbone, two strings. Belly button gets pulled back as if it's being pulled by another string through the tail, through the lower back. Weight on the heels. Lift the collarbone. Interlace the thumbs. Fingers go up. Suck in the belly button. Collarbone. Fingertips. The lower back lifts out of the hip line. Hold, belly button, collarbone, fingertips. The middle back lifts out of the lower back. Hold, belly button, collarbone, fingertips. Upper back lifts out of the middle back. Hold, belly button, collarbone, fingertips. And then shoulders lift out of the upper back. Hold, belly button, collarbone, fingertips. Maintain the structure, hands fall. Exhale. Chin to the collarbone, collapsing the chest, melting one vertebrae at a time down. Pull through those and hang once you get all the way down. Keep the weight on the heels, knees locked. Inhaling deep, exhale. Just feel as if two strings are lifting the hips to the sky, to the ceiling. Release the arms, suck in the belly button. Come up, inhale slowly. Rebuilding the structure of the spine by sucking in the belly button, coming up one vertebra at a time. Two more of those things. Switch. Inhale, reach. This time, slight spiral twist with the reach. Switch. Inhale, very gentle twist. Inflating the arms. 
triceps, fingers spinning, and then behind, reaching over. This time, spin, gentle spin, hands on the hips, and circles, two, three, four, as if you're painting the perimeter of a circle, and then reverse it, do your best to really get every edge, part of the edge of the circle. swing the arms just to finish up. Every five you're going to, you're swinging the arms but you're flicking the fingers up here, flick the fingers down, back here, flick the fingers up to bring the momentum. This is really great for the heart but also great at softening the shoulders and every five you're going to pump your knees. Spread it to the whole body. Um, inhale, wet light up at the front of the body. Roll it down the back like a tidal wave. Head to heels. Well, like a waterfall, I should say. Tidal wave is coming up the front, exhaling down the back like a waterfall. Um, inhale, up the left side. Exhale down the right side. Um, inhale, white line to the belly. Push it down, legs into the ground, let it expand into the ground, coming back up and around like a fountain in reverse, like upside down. Um, one more breath into the belly. Push to the top of the head and surround the body like a waterfall. Fountain sprinkles in all directions. Oh. Have gratitude for the body, the space that you're in, the good people in your life. Thank you guys for training with me. I hope you enjoyed this session. Uh, I'll be doing more personal like sessions like this uh, in, in the coming days. And uh, if you have any thoughts, questions, or ideas, please feel free to reach out. Like I said, put it in the comments. Of, um, especially if you're watching this after the live stream, just put it in the comments and I'll totally address anything that I, I might see. So I love you guys and I hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of your evening and I hope to see you uh, tomorrow or later on in the week. Bye. Oh yeah, follow please at uh, Jan's Tai Chi Everywhere. I release three videos a day on my YouTube. I live stream on TikTok but I release three videos a day on my YouTube. So like two shorts and one longer form video. So. Uh, there will be more stuff coming to TikTok, but right now a lot is on YouTube, thousands of hours literally, so check it out. And I just dropped uh, training with your your kid, if you have like a kid. It's like I have a, a son who's nine, but um, when he was nine months old, I still trained with him. And I just released the video today from when he was nine months old, so I'm very excited about that. So please check that out too. Love you guys. Bye.